Although this could be seen as too graphic, program coordinators say it's necessary. To be able to actually see what could happen, what they could face, is, is phenomenal. Emergency rescue vehicles respond to a drunk driving accident. Both freshmen and community members look on with mixed emotions as their fellow upperclassmen lay injured or worse. To see something, to see it, is to believe it. I lost a classmate this August due to a car crash, and it just means a lot to our class especially, and I want to get the point across to the freshmen, because it's been a long time since we've lost any students. Geared only to freshmen, the program teaches students using actual law enforcement and medical professionals to build the story from the crash to the courtroom. But when you can involve the student in what you're teaching and hands-on experiences, that's what they face. The upperclassmen say there are several reasons they got involved. Since I'm a senior now, I want like freshmen and those below me to like look up to me and like sort of understand that this is a huge event and they should take it seriously. It's not worth it because those 10 seconds could be the difference between you living and you not. And he was, it's our senior year, like he almost made it out of high school. He was almost there. More than 150 freshmen from Lebanon and surrounding area schools were able to hear the message of safety and smart choices. Reporting for NBC North Dakota Quick News. responses under tough situations. The active shooter simulator machine uses real crime scenes and actors to make the practice experience more authentic. Students use real police weapons with CO2 cartridges instead of bullets. Police officers really don't know what the people they come into contact with have in their possession and that can change really quickly. With a chance of a possible threat appearing anywhere on five projector screens, students have to be conscious of their surroundings. Students enter the arena. The criminal justice professor gives them a scenario setting. Chances are the scenarios are never the same. Students are put to the test with real-life situations, like routine traffic stops and home invasions. After each run, they go through a debriefing with the instructor to Every hunting season has its difficulties. Last year, it was an ammo shortage. This year, it's the deer themselves. The North Dakota Game and Fish Department is issuing 12,000 fewer deer gun licenses than it did a year ago. I like to get people into the outdoors. Jeb Williams so is the assistant chief answer, of the uh, Wildlife Division. The he says deer season. numbers are devastatingly low. We've uh, experienced some really tough winters in North Dakota. And so, you know, over the last couple years, we're, we're, we're trying to stabilize and actually build that population back up. Jamie Breck is an avid hunter. And while he respects Game and Fish's decision, he... Out here. Um, I was looking through pictures today of the last couple weeks and it just brought a smile to my face because every kid was having such a great time. Each child is paired with a You Mary Buddy, a physical therapy student. And they say they get just as much out of the experience as the children yep, do. I'm here on Chestnut Lane. I'm just outside Bismarck, almost in Lincoln. What's interesting is that there's two houses on this lane. On my left-hand side is Greg's house, and the other side is Gigi's house. Ryan, our photographer, will pin over and give you a look here. They're actually brother and sister, and they're going to be competing through it. I'm going to be driving through the house, and we're going to give you a tour of the light show through here. So what they do is they, they prepare themselves for months now and they put their lights to music. There's a uh, radio station that you could listen to that matches the light show with it. Yes, indeed, Marissa. It is against uh, West Fargo Cheyenne and it is a, a neat time and a special time here for the Legacy uh, High School football program. Coach Clements is with me here and uh, Chris, talk just a little bit, if you would, just about the most rewarding part, I guess, to getting this far in the program's history. Uh, I guess the most rewarding part of getting this far tonight is we get to hit somebody else. You know, we didn't we didn't have a scrimmage last week because we got rained out. Um, there's a lot of uh, question marks right now, I guess. So we're we're kind of interested to see how we react tonight. How much would have the scrimmage helped? Oh, tremendously. Uh, you know, you can get kids on film. You can teach them on film. Um, you know, you, you get to eliminate some of those battles that were going on in fall camp. So we didn't get to see that. We'll get to see it tonight and, uh, you know, make adjustments. We're, you know, in the process of building right now. So it's just a matter about how we, we uh, react tonight and 
move Monica, ahead. Monica, road conditions out here are pretty terrible right now. And you know what? I'm here right now with Captain Kyle Kirkmeyer of the North Dakota Highway Patrol to find out what you can do to stay safe on the roads. So, Captain, now tell me a little bit about what the Highway Patrol has seen today in regards to accidents. Our worst area has been east of Bismarck. So if you're traveling east of Bismarck on I-94 in the steel area is where we had some freezing rain prior, like on Sunday. Uh, up to that point, and then with the snow now, it's been really icy. We've had uh, jackknife semis and vehicles in a the ditch there, so that's an area to be very careful of. For those of uh, people who are really into the Monster Jam, what are some of the trucks they'll be seeing here tonight? Well, obviously, they're going to see Scarlet Bandit. That would be mine. And then my husband drives the Bounty Hunter. You're going to see Grave Digger, El Toro Loco, the Grinder, and a fan favorite, Batman. Okay. What is it like competing against your husband in some of these uh, donut and the wheelie competitions? Carla Langang and her late husband Dennis started Carden Custom Framing 25 years ago after learning the ins and outs of the framing business while working at other stores. My husband Dennis and I started our company in 1989, so we've been in business for 25 years now. Langang says her customers frequently think outside the box when it comes to items they want framed. We do a lot of shadow boxes, a lot of jerseys, um, memorabilia, um, anything from family photos to prints that people pick up on vacation. Computerized mat cutters have replaced hand cutters, but there are still some parts of the framing business that are best done the old-fashioned way, and that's by hand. It's pretty much uh, vice, glue, nails. So Prairie Style Homes, uh, Frank Lloyd Wright in the 1920s and 30s, um, wanted to build homes, uh, residential homes that pretty much anybody could afford. And the way he looked at it, he wanted to build something that had some openness to it. I really like the unique style of the fireplace. You know, the way it just sort of jets out at you and, and um, it doesn't, you know, it's not flat. It just has this, this nice angles to it. And then the symmetry too. There's a lot of symmetry, a lot of squares. This lot is unique in that um, we have openness on all sides except one which is on the side of the garage where my neighbors are. So I have no obstructing views from any of the other homes. 